An expedition to explore the seas in the northernmost part of the planet. Two young Singaporeans were among a group of about 30 scientists on board a vessel, a research vessel last month. And their mission, to hunt for methane activity, one of the worst culprits of global warming. They were sent to survey the Barren Sea in the Arctic, where they had the opportunity to help sub-sample sediments and process samples of marine sea creatures that were collected. They also learned more about how advanced technologies such as remotely operated vehicles and autonomous underwater vehicles are used for deep sea research and exploration, as well as for mapping the sea floor. And now returning from the high seas to share their tales with us, are To Yun Fan, she's research assistant at the Earth Observatory of Singapore, and Yan Yu Ting, PhD candidate at the Asian School of the Environment, both from NTU in Singapore. Oh, let's start with you, Yu Ting. Um, this is your first time. Yun Fan has actually done this before. Mm -hmm. Am I right? Yes, that's right. Um, hard or easy? Oh, it's exciting. It's difficult in terms of like you know you have to adapt to the different. Um, climate, dif um, the different temperatures, it's really cold and also the different work schedule and because it's my first um, expedition on a research vessel so we learned about um, how work is carried out 24-7 and we have to work in different shifts for six hours every day you know I work from 2, two to 8 um, every day from 2 p.m. to 8 p.m. 2 a.m. to 8 a.m. things like that and it's really exciting that we get to see how science is carrying out on board while you know out at sea for 12 days actually a lot on the sh on the schedule. It is, yeah. Uh, Yunfan, let's bring you in on the conversation here. So it, it isn't your first expedition. You uh, travelled these to the Southern Ocean, we understand, yes. previously. Uh, tell us what was different about this Arctic project compared to your previous expedition. On the previous expedition, we were more focused on mapping, and uh, we were travelling on the southern southern seas, and the waves are a lot higher. Mm. Um, so. The difference would be we went higher north instead of higher south, and um, yeah. Did that make it more? Did that make it more challenging? I mean, you mentioned uh, the, the the fact that the seas were higher. Yeah. Yeah. Does the, so the waves are a lot to you? higher. What, what does that do to you as a when you're traveling? Does it Im impact your work at all? No, I actually quite like the sea. See um, schedule where they put us in shifts and we work in 12 hours or in six hours. Right, okay. Yeah. Okay. Are you yeah. Think, uh, if I look at the list of the things you all had to do and yeah. you had to learn, and then the official uh, mission of this particular expedition uh, it's the advancing knowledge of methane in the Arctic project. But then you ended up working with all sorts of very advanced remote tracking vehicles that, yeah. yeah. Do we use much of that in Singapore and for what purpose? These kinds of vehicles that travel on the floor of the ocean mapping stuff? Mm, as far as I know, I don't think there are any of these um, ROVs currently that's being deployed in Singapore. Yeah, probably due to the um, uh, size of the so research. So how do we do it? How do we map Singapore's sea floor then? Yeah, so we use similar techniques. Like even though we don't use like ROVs or AUVs that we have done in the Barents Sea, we can still use like multi-beam bathymetry. What's that? Um, it's kind of like using um, the loop pings on the sea floor, and then we, we sonic ping. Sonic okay, ping. Right. Yeah, yeah, so that help us to have a better understanding of the bathymetry and also the subsurface of the mm. sea floor as well. Mm. So even though we don't have like the type of equipment that they have, but we can use um, similar methods, but we adapt the settings so that we can deploy them in Singapore. Right. Mm -hmm. And also, you think yep. um, you're hoping to bring all of this knowledge uh, that you've gained to this PUB-funded NTU research study. Is that correct? Yeah. Uh, can you tell us more about that study, first of all, what it, mm -hmm. what it aims to achieve? So this um, study actually is a new project that we hope to better understand um, the Singapore Straits, to understand how um, Singapore Straits was formed and how can it allow us to better understand the past environmental history of Singapore. Okay. Yeah. So uh, in this study, we'll be using sediment samples and water mm. samples to help mm -hmm. us answer our research objectives. So this is where we hope to um, apply what we have learned on the Barren Sea expedition, where the similar techniques can be brought back. So, uh, these sediment sample collection that you do, that is, I take it to help us understand what's happening here, because the principles, I take it, would be transferable. 
and it would then help Singapore learn how to manage the sea level changes in the future. How would these things actually apply in terms of our managing sea levels? So the sediments actually record past histories uh, in climate. And by studying it, we get to see the difference, how the climate changes throughout the years. I'm actually not as well fluent in sediments. Um, but she but, is more than you are. Yes, so, so she did her your, PhD. What, what is your bigger contribution on this? I was helping out with geophysical mapping and geophysical uh, data collection. On Meaning the, what? So like seafloor mapping or seismic, uh, underwater seabed, so uh, subsurface stuff. Okay. Mm. Uh, Eugene, you're oh. also going to be looking, I mean, those, you are the specialist in sediments for the Straits. You mentioned that before, that you're going to be using that to map uh, the, the Singapore Straits. Why is that, knowing that information, important for us as a port? What, is the, what will it be used for? So basically, sediments, um, from the sediments, we can tell, like what Infra mentioned previously. So from the sediments, we can tell how uh, past environmental and climate has changed through time. So for example, in the past 10,000 years, the sea level actually 20 meters lower than the current level. So it's important for us to understand how sea level has changed in the past. How fast has it been rising or was it a slow rise or a fast rise? Mm -hmm. And because of the current warming climate, we know that sea level is already changing. But how fast or how slow is it exactly changing? And whether does this rate of sea level change actually affect Singapore coast in terms of the changing coastline? So this is important yeah. as so well. So by knowing, mm. you know, by knowing how um, the environment has reacted to the different changes in sea level, we can then um, provide more information for projections and also for mitigation measures right. for policymakers. Oh, thanks so much to both of you, <laughs> two young scientists coming in this evening from NTU Singapore, Tu Yun Fan, research assistant at the Earth Observatory of Singapore, and Yin Yu Ting, a PhD candidate at the Asian School of the Environment, both of you from NTU. Thanks so much for coming in. Thank you for Thank having you. us Thank you.